Okay guys, welcome back to the new Keycloak video that I have. Um, in this video, we're going to be doing our building on top of what we did before. And what we did before essentially was uh, just have Keycloak set up to be connecting to a PostgreSQL database and actually have a JavaScript application connect to it and actually use that for uh, registering and authenticating users into your application. In this video, we're going to be building off on top of that. Um, not so much, but basically what we're going to do now is actually retrieve some user information from Keycloak after logging in. Because in the previous video, we did not retrieve that information. We just, as soon as the user got logged in, um, we just displayed that they were in the logged in page. But now we are going to be getting some user information, and we'll have that be displayed in our little HTML page. So let's go on. Before continuing, I just want to show that I do have a user already created here called test user. Uh, you can see it's just uh, the name is John Smith, and he's part of Realm One. I want to just show you that because this is the user's information that we're going to extract from Keycloak in our application. So now, if we open up index.html, this is what we have as of the third video, and we're going to add some code here to the success portion of this. Key cloak initialization method. So, as I'm typing here, essentially there are two things, two ways you can actually get the information. One is by using the actual key cloak object that we created, and another way that we'll get to a little bit later in the video is to actually use, um, you know, HTTP uh, web calls to key cloak itself. So, right now, using the key cloak object, if you just follow along with this video, you can see that the keycloak object actually has a function called load user profile, which we're going to be loading into a local variable called profile data. And that function actually does return uh, the data as a promise. And so basically to be able to parse and read a promised return value, you have to use the syntax, which is profile data dot then, and then you can add a function callback or just, you know, declare the function within there. And all I'm going to do is just write to the console log and basically call this json.stringify user profile. So anything that's in a JSON format, this will be uh, displayed in the console log um, in user readable text. And so we'll see all of this, all of those contents in the console log. Um, I'm going to be declaring another variable called user info and we're going to call another function of keycloak object which is called load user info. There's some overlap in data that they both retrieve, you know, load user profile and load user info, but I just want to show it here. And just like the previous, you know, method that was called in keycloak, it is being returned as a promise and so to be able to extract that uh, you do have to do this user info that then and then declare a function and uh, just handle the return data there and just like above I'm going to be doing a console log and just uh, displaying the data there and on top of that I will be creating a you should say I'll be invoking this code here which is going to replace a div tag that I'm going to be creating down below called placeholder 1a and I'll be updating its inner HTML to essentially say welcome and then I'm going to play or display the um, user data dot name okay so there we can handle or we handle both uh, so now let's go ahead and actually create this new div tag and let's call it placeholder 1a And as mentioned before, the second way of actually getting data, we can use, um, we can actually make HTTP web calls to Keycloak to get this information. Okay, for now, let's just test the first way that we have. So let's go ahead and just log in. 
and you can see here now it says uh, welcome John Smith and we have the previous two messages that we had from the previous video and so if we go into the console logs you'll see here that there's actually information displayed from those two keycloak method calls that we actually invoked and if I zoom in a little bit you can see the actual individual data fields that is returned from the JSON response and I guess if I go here to the code you can see that this log file or this console log specifies profile data and is parsing out the user profile and that's what you see here in this first one now the second one in the console log user info you'll see that and if we go back to the code you you will see that this portion here actually is responsible for displaying that and now you can see here the user data dot name and if you look here you'll see that there's a name field and you can see it's actually John Smith and that is what is displayed in the actual HTML page above welcome John Smith Now on to the second way of making, uh, or I should say, getting user data from Keycloak. We're going to go ahead and start creating a web request. So here we're going to declare a local variable called URL, and I'm going to be typing in the path to our local host Keycloak, and uh, just you know copy the rest of the URL string here. Of course, if you have a different realm name, change the realm one that I have here with the realm that you have, and finish off the end of this URL string to be user info. Next, I'm going to be creating a new variable called rec, which is going to be of type XML HTTP request. And I'm going to be doing this line uh, where basically it's going to be making a get web request with this URL with the third parameter set to true. And here we're going to be setting the request headers for this object or for this uh, XML HTTP request object. And for this to work, you do have to pass in the um, access ID token. And so with the Keycloak object, there is a token variable that you can invoke, which is basically the access ID token. I should say the access token, not the ID token. Now, if you just follow the rest of uh, the code that I'm about to do here, essentially is I'm doing the um, setting up the code to actually receive a response back. So just follow along and copy this into your code. And we're going to be able to see this tested very shortly. So at this point, uh, we should have received a successful response back. At which point, we're going to be doing a JSON parse on the, you know, the uh, HTTP request data that is returned. Once again, we're going to just go ahead and log this to the console log, just like we did for the other two keycloak object method requests that we did above. And we're also going to go ahead and update another div that we're about to create. Um, and we're going to actually update this div to basically list out something else of the user's info. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and display the user's email. So um, we're going to go ahead and just end this line like this so your email is and then we're going to access the email field of the data object in the event of a failure I'm just going to go ahead and just log an error and this last line item here we're actually going to be sending the web request So now down below, let's go ahead and create another div and let's just rename it 
to be placeholder 1b. And now let's go ahead and test this again. And now you can see that new line saying your email is jsmith at tgmail.com. I added the T there just in case there was an actual email address with this. Um, but you can see that that matches exactly what's in the Keycloak web console for this round. And that is the email associated to this user. And then you can see this console log that is correlated to that extra code that we added just now. So once again, this is the code that we just added, and you can see that the data return is going to be d displayed on the placeholder 1B, which is there the third div that we have. And then you can see the new code here also referencing placeholder 1A, which also contains user information, at which point we are displaying the user's name, and that's the div tag associated to that. And just like we did last time, if we wanted to go into our Keycloak web console, go to our app, you can see the available sessions, which is us right now. We are logged in as test user. And if we log out, you'll once again see that the user is not there. But I guess just as an FYI, these errors that you see on the screen you can be ignored right now. They're just some fonts that are not found while being downloaded. But um, it doesn't hurt the exercise that we're doing now. And once again, when we refresh the page, no active sessions. So that's pretty much it guys. I want to definitely thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully uh, it was something that you guys found useful and that you could apply to your personal projects or anything that you're doing with respect to Keycloak. Um, if you did find this useful, I would like to ask for you guys to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I do have other social media accounts that are related to this YouTube channel. So if you would like to go ahead and you can follow me there on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a Patreon. Of course, every little bit helps in terms of just, uh, you know, just feedback. Um, again, with liking and subscribing and all of that good stuff. So once again, thank you guys for your time. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. <music>